Sir? A filmmaker, writer, director, and a photographer. And where are you from? From Brooklyn, New York. Born and raised. My family from South Carolina. But I was born in Brooklyn. And how did you get into the business? I, I, I started actually, my first job was an internship on a Spike Lee film when I was in college, um, 19 years old. Um, that was my first film ever, Jungle Fever. And I've been doing films ever since. I've been working with Spike for 15 years now. I know I look really young, but you know, I've been in the game for a little while. I started early. So far, so you, you've been in the game for such a long time. Like, How did you realize that you wanted to be in the film game? Well, actually, in college, I used to do a lot of plays. I wrote plays, I acted in a couple of plays, and I always wanted to be a writer, so I used to write a lot. And, um, you know, Spike did, um, it was, I think, do the right thing, that I was kind of like, I was like, really um, influenced by it. And I was like, wow, why don't I, the stories that I write, why don't I, you know, make them into films as opposed to on theater? Because in theater, you're kind of restricted. You got one stage, you can't, you can't do as much as you can do with a film, so I, I decided that that's what I wanted to do, and you know, I tried to get an internship with him because he was pretty much the only black filmmaker in, in New York at the time, so that's, that's when I decided I wanted to um, do it, and I got that internship, and the rest is history. So pretty much you, you immediately sought out Spike Lee when you realized you wanted to do this and you just, like, what did you have to in, uh, hang around the set, work for free, what kind of things? Did you yeah, do? I mean, the internship, but getting the internship was, was hard in itself, you know. I um, found out about this workshop that he used to give at Brooklyn um, campus of LIU College. Um, and I used to go to the workshop, directing workshop, cinematography workshop, so I went every Saturday, came home from school and went and I was kept asking the people that worked, you know, how I wanna be I wanna be an intern with a film and you got doing the film. Kept bugging them, bugging them, bugging them and then I got a call when they was going into pre production for Jungle Fever for an interview. And I went in and I was like, you know, I knew them so much from seeing them every weekend that, you know, I got the job but it was like maybe at least thirty interns on Jungle Fever. Spike does that a lot. He has interns on the film. And that that was the first time I did a film and it was the first time all those 30 interns did it and, you know, one of the interns is somebody that I, one of the other interns is somebody that I still continue to work with as an assistant director and that's Tracy Hines. We started out together as interns in Jungle Fever. And um, that was the first time and it was, it was just important, you know, that's the first time I got to see anything like that. You know, work on my film. Now the nickname Boogie, how did you get the nickname? But actually, you know, I got it working on the Spike film. You know, I was working on Crooklyn. And the um, first AD name is Mike Ellison. My name is Mike. You know, and we used to always get mixed up on the radio. Mike, Big Mike, Little Mike, Big Mike, Mike, Mike. And one day he just, you know, said, y'all motherfuckers better think of a nickname. But, you know, and I don't even remember who came up with the nickname Boogie because I, I just, I was always kind of fast. You know, and I played basketball and I was, you know, tune, tune, you know, so. And, and it's stuck, you know, some people don't even know my real name, they just know Boogie, you know, so, but you know, there's always a lot of mic and set, so it, it was a good thing. Uh, since you've been in the business, how competitive is this business to Um, honestly, I don't really, I think it's, comp I don't really think it's com that competitive, you know, I think, I think a lot of times people say they want to do it, and, but they're not really that hungry, so I think the people that are really hungry, and separate from the people that just talk like they really want to do it, but they really not that hungry. So it's not that much competition if you're really hungry. The only thing is that there's obstacles, you know, with external, externally trying to get your foot in the door or trying to get opportunities. That's is that that's what's hard, you know. But there's not a lot of competition. I don't think just because a lot of people, you know, aren't putting in the time they work. You know, I mean, I started out with a ton of filmmakers. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know where they are now. You know, I don't know what, what they're doing, and they, you know, but they wanted to really do films, but obviously they really didn't want to do it that bad if they, they're not around anymore. You know. So far in these 15 years, what has been your, pretty much your most memorable, most exciting set experience or film that you worked on so far? Um, I, I kind of have two. One was Blade, you know, I got the opportunity to go to LA and work on the first Blade. And that was the first time I worked in an action movie. 
you know, with the special effects and the green screen and just, you know, a black um, superhero. So it was really, that was really, in my first time in L.A., you know, it was a, that was a really good experience for me to work on that and then my, my other film that I hold dear is The Preacher's Wife you know because um, it was it was one of the toughest films and it was one of the the uh, best films you know because I just you know that was Whitney Houston in her heyday you know we had Whitney had Denzel Courtney Vance you know and and for a week we were in the church and she just sang you know for a week you know and sometimes the, the director wouldn't even call cut she'd just say we lose cameras and keep rolling because they was in church and they were just going at it and they wouldn't stop but she just kept shooting, you know, so it was just, we were just working and everybody in the crew just looking and clapping. It, just, it was like we were in church for a week, you know, so that was really fun, you know. So are you currently working on anything? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the financing for my feature debut, which is entitled, You're Nobody Till Somebody Kills You. Um, it's about a serial killer killing rappers, so I'm, I'm working on the financing for that. You know, I'm still selling my, my short film collection. Which is entitled Shoot First, Ask Questions Later, you know. It's on it's on the website, blackfootfilm.com, www.blackfootfilm.com. You can purchase the DVD for the short series. And coming soon, the book will be um, uh, sold on the, on the uh, website also in three weeks. That's also entitled Shoot First, Ask Questions Later. What is the last set that you worked on? The last film that I worked on was a film called Hard Luck. Uh, we shot it in Rhode Island. Um, um, Mario Van Peebles was the director. Wesley Snipes was the actor. You know, um, and it was about you know, it was it was it spanned like three different stories in you know um, in the film. Three three stories happened at the same time, but it was called Hard Luck. You know, Wesley Snipes in Rhode Island. It was a tough but interesting film to work on. And right, and right before that, I worked on the Inside Man. Spike Lee's film, you know, with Denzel and Jodie Foster. That was a really good experience too in New York. What did you do on the Inside Man? I was the second, second assistant director on Inside Man. Uh, that's what I've been. I've been an AD, an assistant director, for about eight years. What are some of the duties of an assistant director? Well, assistant directors, you know, we 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 are the the cogs in the wheel. We 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 more managerial. You know, we we basically ADs are in charge of the set, and we make sure that everything's happening. And we are the liaison between the director and everybody else. You know, basically the only person the director should talk to is the actors and the director of photography. Everybody else should go through the ADs, whether it's camera people, hair, makeup people, wardrobe, whatever department, because there's too many people, you know, to you know, for the director to, to have to deal with. You know, they go through the assistant directors. We we we, we make sure everything is, is together. We do the schedule. We make sure everything is on time and that the film is shot on time and on budget. And what are the steps to becoming an AD? How, how do you do that? Um, there are two um, different ways to become an assistant director. Um, and a DJ, that's what I'm a, I'm a, I'm a DJ, the director of America as an assistant director. And the DJ has a training program that you can, there's a two year training program, you have to take a test, um, and you do two years as a DJ trainee on a movie or TV show or whatever. So for two years you, you're training and after two years you can join the DGA as a second AD or you can as a um, or you can you have to make seven hundred days as a production assistant and put in what they call your book. You have to work at seven hundred days as a production assistant, you know, keep all your paperwork and submit that to the director's guild. Um, and you and, and even if you submit your book you you have to be hired as an A D before you're officially in, you know, you can't just put your book in and then say you're in the DJ, you have to get hired because the, the initiation fee is like $4,000, so you, you want to get a job before you join, technically.